Hi mates and welcome back to my World of Tanks channel. I'm Antonov2 and today we're on the patch 9.6 test server. And um, yeah, there have been some very exciting changes. Specifically, they added two new tier 8 premium tanks to the game. One is the SCA2, a Japanese tank, and the other is the AMX Chasseur de Char, or CDC. And that is a French tank. So these are both very interesting vehicles but before we have a look at these in detail I'm just going to quickly talk about two other very important changes uh, the first one being that now I'm not sure if you're aware of this but in patch 9.6 the shot dispersion in the aiming circle will be changed so that means that shots will not go towards the center of your aiming reticle as often as they used to. Now this is quite interesting because they actually changed it in the opposite way, I think in something like 8.5 or 8.6, I'm not quite sure anymore, maybe it was 8.9, but anyway they just made the exact opposite change and now they're basically reversing it. So that's interesting, it basically means that uh, really this is a buff to all tanks with high accuracy, like for example the German medium tanks and a nerf to tanks with horrible accuracy, like for example the Russian heavies, because that will just mean that these tanks won't be able to hit weak spots as easily. Yeah, so accuracy will become more important again. Another cool feature is that now if you host Platoon, for example, uh, the interface here for inviting people has changed slightly and it looks a lot more sleek. And as you can see, the contacts list was reworked as well. So that is quite nice. They both look quite good. However, that's not the main reason why we're here. We're here to talk about the new tier 8 premium tanks. Now actually when I say tanks that's not quite correct because today I won't be talking about the STA2 very much. I will be doing a separate video for this tank and we'll be focusing on the AMX CDC. I'll just call it the CDC from now on. I know I said there'd only be one video a week and so on but I mean you know I'm just so interested in these two tanks that I really wanted to bring you a kind of a review or preview on both of them. So I'll be doing a video on the AMX now and then tomorrow or the day after tomorrow you'll be getting a preview for the STA1. Now this AMX CDC is a tier 8 French medium tank. That means you will be able to use, for example, your Batshat crew in this vehicle. And honestly, this tank is so 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 good I mean I've read uh, some of the forum threads and many people said this tank sucks but I mean seriously this tank is amazing okay so we'll just have a quick look at its stats it's got 1400 hit points which is really good that's actually the second highest amount of hit points of any of the tier 8 medium tanks the only tank that has got more hit points than this is the STA1 at tier Eight, and also the STA2 actually which has got slightly more but 1400 hit points is really a lot. This tank weighs 34 tons so that's not very much really, you shouldn't be ramming people but oh my god has it got an amazing engine. 1200 horsepower, they're tier 10 vehicles that look at this amount of raw engine power with envy. It has got a specific power so that's the power to weight ratio of 34.99 horsepower per ton that's almost 35 now i'm not quite sure about this but this might be the best power to weight ratio in the game at the moment this tank is ridiculously agile it really really can shift i mean this tank's got a way better power to weight ratio than for, than for example the bat shot or the leopard one because those two tanks have both got something like 21 or 22 horsepower per ton but this tank's got 35 and that is ridiculous. I think even the Panzer 1C has got less than this. One drawback of the tank, and I mean drawback is relative here, is the 57 kilometers an hour speed limit. Now, you might be going like, what? I mean, 57 kmh is amazing really. But the thing is, considering that the power to weight ratio on this tank is so good, it really could go a lot faster, so that's a bit of a disappointment. But, I mean, seriously, because of this amazing power to weight ratio, you will be going up steep slopes at 50 kilometers an hour, so it's really hard to complain. The traverse speed is 40 degrees per second, which is quite decent. 
but now <laughs> we come to the main issue of this tank and that's the armor i mean really <laughs> talking about the armor is kind of hasn't really got much of a point here because it's only got 30 millimeters at the front turret and hull 20 at sides and rear and <laughs> really anything can penetrate this tank you can drive this tank in a tier 2 match and tanks will penetrate it any gun with a caliber of over 90 millimeters will overmatch the armor that means it will go through no matter what angle you're shooting at it now I've actually had one bounce in the entire time I've been driving this tank so that was quite lucky but generally this tank is just made of paper really there are light tanks but laugh at the armor of this tank so I mean seriously you cannot absorb any shots or actually you will absorb shots but you cannot deflect any they'll all penetrate now this actually is in my opinion the only drawback of a tank but it's got bad armor because the gun is really good it gets the same gun that the fcm 50t uses actually well it's not exactly the same gun it's not got the same name but really it is the same gun you already get this tank on the arl uh arl 44 but it is vastly improved for this tank it fires 8.22 rounds a minute that is very very quick uh, you reload just above six seconds between shots it's got 212 millimeters of penetration which is awesome 240 alpha damage is average for a tier 8 medium tank 0.34 accuracy is really really good and 2.2 seconds aiming time is very good too actually that goes down to i think about 1.9 with vertical stabilizers and brothers and arms so the gun is probably one of the best guns on any of the tier 8 medium tanks i'm not talking premium tanks but medium tanks in general so that is really good and it also gets just short of 2000 damage per minute so that is very very good now one important fact as well is that this vehicle gets 10 degrees of gun depression that is huge like that's the amount of gun depression that an m48 pattern or a leopard one get so really there's only one tank in the game or actually two tanks in the game that get better gun depression than this tank here i think and those are the german hoovers as i like to call them so that's the dicker max and the stura emil so those are the two tanks that they just get ridiculous gun depression but this vehicle's gun depression is just so good and combined with the high top speed and great maneuverability and power to weight ratio of this tank that will just allow you to get into advantageous positions on high ground and you will still be able to hit your enemies if they are below you because of your good gun depression. The turret traverse speed is 38 degrees per second. That is very fast. You will see that this turret turns very quickly. The view range is 390 meters. That is awesome because the average view range for a tier 8 medium tank is 380. Some only get 370. So 390 is very, very good. And signal range is average with 750 meters. So to sum things up, all the stats really are very good except for the armor that is horrible and i mean the top speed is good but it's not proportional to the power to weight ratio i'll put it like that but it's still very good so what crew skills and equipment should you go for well i went for repairs i'm starting to think though that maybe you shouldn't go for repairs but rather for camouflage on your free crew members except for the commander who should get six cents obviously and i mean brothers and arms would be a good choice too but probably you won't be using a separate crew for this tank because you'll use it be using your french medium tank crews because it's a premium tank so you don't have to retrain your crew to use it now for equipment i went with vertical stabilizer and tank gun rammer just to increase my firepower and make uh, me hit more targets on the move as well but for my third item choice i went with optics now coated optics might be somewhat controversial on this tank but i think it's definitely the best option because of this 390 meters view range with coated optics you get something between 410 420 so that is even more than most tier 10 tanks get as view range and really with your great speed and maneuverability you will be able to get very good spots off and as this tank can be played as a sniper the extra view range will really help to spot for yourself if your teammates uh, aren't doing too well which seriously you can't rely on in you know world of tanks battles so for consumables i went with repair kit first aid kit and 
100 octane gasoline. I did not choose a fire extinguisher on this tank just because I didn't really see this tank getting lit up a lot. And I just think that benefits so much from the gasoline. And I mean, seriously, if you're getting shot at, you're going to be dead most of the time anyway. So yeah, I just, I just went for gasoline because... In my opinion, just having that extra 5% engine power is just so strong on this tank. Now, one negative fact about this tank I have to mention is that it doesn't get premium matchmaking. So you can and will face tier 10 vehicles. Now, obviously, that will only be 30% of the time, but it still will happen. However, this tank can really look after itself in a tier 10 match. I've played one so far, and I mean, I was even able to penetrate the side armor of a mouse, so it's really hard to complain. I mean, is this tank underpowered? Definitely not, because it's fast, it's got an awesome gun, it's got quite a lot of health, and great view range. Is it overpowered? I don't think so either. I think this tank's actually balanced quite well. It might be just, I think in a tier 8 game, it's a little bit overpowered maybe, but honestly, I mean, anybody can load HE ammo against this tank and penetrate it in a tier 8 game even, and that's why I personally think that this tank has to be played more as a support or sniping vehicle. Uh, similarly to how you would play a Leopard 1 really, you just use your insane mobility and speed to get to a good position and then you just support your team from there and then if the uh, battle is looking well for you and then in the late game you can just run around the battlefield and clean up but at the beginning you have to play quite passively because you just do not have the armour to take any punishment. So. Yeah, I've been waffling on for quite some while now, so let's head out to the battlefield and see how this tank performs in some real action. So, here we are on Live Oaks, and this was actually my very first game in the AMX CDC. And actually, at the beginning of this game, I won't perform too well, so uh, just stick around and then I hope I'll make up for it at the end. Um, yeah, so... I decided to go down the left flank here because really uh, close quarters combat in a kind of an urban environment like I would have it on the A and B line is not really what this tank's strengths are because you know, just because of its bad armor and good accuracy I just figured that it would perform a lot better over here. So I just lie in wait behind this bush and hope that I'll see something. Now, as you can see, obviously, almost everybody's trying to play this AMX CDC, so there are quite a lot on both teams. And there's our first candidate, however I miss him. And, um, again. Now, that actually is not the fault of the tank, it's my own fault, because uh, I, had, I had quite low frame rate there, and I couldn't really get my... Uh, my cursor to hover over the, over the place where I wanted to actually shoot the enemy. So that right there, that was not my fault. That was that was definitely the fault of the tank. But I mean, you know, RNG will happen, and um, with the changes to the, the shot dispersion in 9.6, you'll probably see this kind of stuff happen a lot more often. However, um, yeah, I'm just having a very very bad time. I didn't hit anything so far. And um, luckily, my allied CDC and T34-3 are kind of making up for my failure here. But I just decide I'm fed up with just relying on, you know, RNG to hit my shots. So I just decide to close the distance. I mean, our enemies are outnumbered 3 to 2, so we should really win that engagement. So I decide to flank round because I can see that the T-34 and CMC, are, or CDC actually, are coming round. Now I uh, juke his shots and he decides to ignore me and go for the T-34. So I get juicy shots to the back of his tank. As you can see the rate of fire on this vehicle is amazing and we finish him off easily. So that right there was just a classic example of a combination of mobility and firepower this tank offers. and. I mean, really, this tank just reminds me so much of the Leopard 1. It's just basically exactly the same, only that the armor is even worse on this tank. But just from the way it feels, you know, it is 
so so similar. So basically if you like Leopard 1 you like this tank probably. So um I'm trying to spot something and as you can see here's the great view range paying off. Now really I should probably go for archery but I realized that a bit too late. So uh, I hang around too long and get shot by the SU-122. However my good man maneuverability allows me to draw back to cover before I take more damage. I think that might have even been an HE shell by the SU, because it did a lot of damage. Although I can't quite remember, maybe I already received a hit earlier this game, I actually forgot, so I'm not sure. But anyway, you'll have to get used to people firing HE at you in this tank, because your armor is just so, so low. So let's see if we can hit this KV-4. Oh, we don't. I mean, we do hit him, but it doesn't penetrate, because, you know, it's, in, it's a KV-4. So, right now things aren't looking too good for my team really, the score's 7 to 8, I mean, it's somewhat even, but things could be better. I take a clutch shot, because, I mean, you know, maybe it hits, and it's better to take one than not to take one. So I hope that this CDC will come out of cover, but apparently he doesn't. So, I decide to go for the SU-152 instead, and right there you can see the amazing on the move accuracy of this tank. I mean, really? I'm just not aiming at all. And considering how fast the acceleration of this tank is, uh, the accuracy on the move is awesome, as you can see right there. So, I take a shot in return for taking out the archery, but worth. So, uh, I now try to snipe this T-34. Can't get my reticle on him, so I just fire blind. Draw back. See if I can hit that... CDC, it's quite a tricky shot, so I decide not to take it, go for T-34 instead, can't hit him either, but can we get the T-34, now he's in cover, but he's in two shot range of me, however, if he rolls high or average, he should usually be able to get me as well, but he only now realises that I'm there, just tries to draw into cover, but our excellent rate of fire, accuracy and so on allows us to take him out. Now, I can see this T-34-3, and right now, I just want to quickly explain what I was thinking. Now, I realise that um, I've got a allied CDC coming along with me here, and I can see that this T-34-3 is on 270 hit points. I myself are on 399 hit points. So, the alpha damage of a T-34-3 is 390. So... 6 out of 10 times he would not be able to one hit me so I hope to be able to absorb one hit of him and then be able to penetrate him twice because my reload is almost half of his and uh, thus I should really be able to win this engagement so let's see how it turns out now unluckily he comes out of cover he does the right thing, he gets a shot into me, and right now I don't have a choice, I really have to go ham on him now, otherwise I've got no chance of winning this engagement, and I probably would have even gotten him, but uh, unluckily the enemy CDC comes along, he was at the right place at the right time, and takes me out. Now really, that was probably a misplay by me, because I shouldn't have rushed that T-34-3 because I knew that the CDC was somewhere over there and I know how fast the tanks because obviously I'm driving it myself so probably I should have just stayed there the accuracy of a T-34-3 is inferior to that of a CDC by a lot so I could have just stayed in the bushes up there used my superior view range to spot the T-34-3 and basically I could have just pinned him right there so a bit of a misplay by me there, but we ended up winning the game all the same. And let's have a look at the post-game stats. So, these are the results of that game. And considering that this tank has only been available since the today, actually, I think. So, there can't have been that many people playing it. And, I mean, we performed quite well. But that only was a second-class mastery badge. So, that means that people must be performing really well in this vehicle. In the team score, we can see that we were second after another... AMX and he dealt 2400 damage we dealt 2119 so 
That was quite good, considering that this was my very first game in this tank. I was quite pleased with that. And in the detailed report, we can see we fired 19 shots, which only 12 hit. Now, I think that is not really characteristical for this gun, because usually I think a lot more shots will hit. It's just I had quite bad aim and quite bad luck at the beginning. But usually, because of good accuracy in the aiming time of this tank, I think you're hit ratio will be quite a bit better. However, 11 of our 12 shots penetrated, so that is very good, allowing us to do this 2,100 damage. We received four hits. Obviously, it's no surprise that all four of those penetrated. We spotted two vehicles, damaged seven, destroyed four, and uh, also picked up some spotting damage. So, here's the really interesting part. We managed to earn 76,000 credits in that game, and the expenses for running this tank are super low. We only had to pay 8,500 for our repairs, and that was complete destruction. So, that's the most you will ever have to pay, is 8,510. That's nothing. And ammo resupply was only 4,800, because the ammunition of this tank cost 200 bucks for a bang. So, that's almost nothing, really. And you will be able to get ridiculous amounts of credits in this machine so yeah all in all what do i think of the uh, amx cdc i think it it's not overpowered i think it's somewhat balanced just because of the fact that basically any tank it gets matched up with can penetrate it with he ammunition and it gets overmatched by almost any gun in its tier or above and also the fact that it doesn't get enhanced matchmaking, so it can face tier 10 vehicles, balances it. But I still think that this is a very, very strong tank. I might even go as far as to say that this is my new favourite tier 8 medium tank. And it's just so good. It's got so many good things about it and very few drawbacks, really. Only the armour and... Calling the top speed a drawback isn't really fair because 57 kilometers an hour is very good. So I think this tank is absolutely amazing. It's a blast to play. I can really recommend this tank to you guys. I think it might be rebalanced in a way that they nerf its stats a bit and therefore give it pr uh, premium matchmaking. I could imagine that happening because... Honestly, I think in a tier 8 matchup, it could just dominate way too easily. But, I mean, that's my opinion. Tell me what you think about the AMX CDC. Do you think it's balanced? Do you think it's just not worth playing or picking up just because it can be destroyed by HE ammunition way too easily? Or do you think it might even be overpowered? And will you pick one up? I think the price of this tank will be similar to that of the Panther 8.8, .8, so we're talking just north of 7,000 gold here. That's quite an investment, so do you think it's worth it or not? Let me know what you think in the comments, and probably tomorrow or day after tomorrow, I'll be doing a review, or actually a preview, on the STA-1. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember that it was only a preview, so things may change, and uh, I don't have much experience with this tank. This was only my fourth game after which I did this review. So that's kind of a short disclaimer. Just, you know, don't nail pin me down on anything that I said here. But I just really enjoyed this tank. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, consider liking it, and check out my next video on the STA-1. I'll see you then, or maybe even on the battlefield. Bye-bye.